So this is as far as we're going to take this integral right here, or this first step. So we've now just completed step one. The second step is to do the denominator of this energy expression. So if we move on to step two, what that means is that we're going to be doing the integral over all space of this electronic wave function, the complex conjugate times the electronic wave function. And so in this case, we are just going to, again, just substitute in the exact same expression we did before, only this time we don't have the Hamiltonian sandwich between it. So the integral over all space, and that's going to be CA times the complex conjugate of 1SA plus CB times the complex conjugate of 1SB, and that's going to be multiplied by CA times 1SA plus CB times 1SB. And then in this case, again, we're just going to FOIL out and distribute the integral sign over all four terms that we're going to be creating. And I'm going to this time pull out the constants out front. So I'm going to have CA squared times the integral of 1SA, the complex conjugate, times the wave function for 1SA. To that, I'm going to add CACB, integral of 1SA, complex conjugate, 1SB, plus CACB, integral over all space, psi 1SB, the complex conjugate, psi 1SA, plus CB squared, times the integral over all space, psi 1SB, the complex conjugate of it, times psi 1SB. So two of these orbitals or these expressions we can eliminate or we can evaluate explicitly. For instance, if we assume that psi 1SA is normalized, then we know this integral over all space of psi star psi is going to be equal to 1. And a similar argument can be made over here with psi star 1SB, psi star or psi 1SB. That integral over all space is also going to be equal to 1. We can also make an argument with these two terms where we're going to also say that these two are the same. And we can say that because we basically have just flipped the order and that we just saw a second ago that the psi 1s is a real function. And so what we have is that the psi of the 1s orbital is the same as the, the complex conjugate. And so that means that there's no difference between these two expressions in the middle. So what we're going to do is we're going to call the answer to this integral over all space of of these terms, we're just going to call it s. And so what that means then is that what we have as our next line that we're going to write in is we're going to have ca squared times 1, and we're going to have plus ca cb, and we're going to have two of those terms because we've got 1, 2. And then from that, or just with this last term, we're going to add an extra cb squared because the integral evaluates to 1. So we now have an expression for the denominator. So our next step is just to write down the expression for the energy of our system. So this is now we're going to just put numerator over denominator. So the numerator was CA squared HAA plus 2 CA CB HAB plus CB squared HAA. And the denominator in this case is the expression that I just have right here that I just found, CA squared plus 2CACB times S plus CB squared. So we've now finished step three. And if I go back up to my checklist, we have step one that we just finished. We've done step two. We've now solved for the energy. And so our next thing to do is to minimize this energy with respect to CA and CB. So let's first do this with respect to CA. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rearrange this expression a little bit, where I'm going to write this expression down where I've multiplied both sides by the denominator. And so what that gives us is CA squared plus 2CA CB times S plus CB squared times the energy, and that's going to be equal to the numerator that we had before, CA squared HAA plus 2CA CB HAB plus CB squared HAA. 
And so we have to take two derivatives. We have to take one with respect to CA, and we have to take the second one with respect to CB, because we have to minimize both variational parameters in this case. So we start by taking the derivative with respect to CA, and what that means then is I'm going to take the derivative of both sides of this expression, and in the first part I have to apply the product rule. So it's first times the derivative of the second, so I'm going to have CA squared plus 2CA CB times S plus CB squared. Derivative of the second is just DE by DCA. From that I'm going to add the second times the derivative of the first, 2CA plus 2CBS plus 0, because there's no CA term in that last part. And then I apply the derivative to the right-hand side. I'm going to have 2CA HAA plus 2CB HAB plus 0, because I don't have a CA term at the end. So when you try to minimize something, you want to set the derivative of it with respect to the term that you're trying to minimize over equal to 0. And so this is that derivative term. And so because we're trying to minimize it, then we are going to set that term equal to 0. What that means is that the rest of that term that it's multiplied with is also 0. So this simplifies this expression quite significantly. And so if I distribute in the energy in the other part of this left-hand term, what I end up getting is 2 times E times CA plus 2 times E times CB times S is equal to 2CA HAA plus 2CB HAB. And then you can see that there's a common factor of 2 throughout all my terms, and so I can just cancel them all out. And so as my final step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move everything over to the right-hand side, and so what that leaves me is 0 is equal to, and I'm going to group together all the terms in relation to the two variational parameters, CA and CB. So I'm going to have CA times HAA minus E plus CB times HAB minus E times S. Let's now take the derivative of this original expression again with respect to the second variational parameter. So now we're going to take the derivative with respect to CB, because again we have to minimize over both variational parameters. So what that means is the derivative again, first times the derivative of the second in this left-hand term that we have up here. And so then the first again is CA squared plus 2CA CB times S plus CB squared, DE by DCB, plus the second, which is just the energy, times the derivative of the first, which is just going to be equal to 2CAS plus 2CB. And then I apply that derivative to the right-hand side. I get 2CAHAB plus 2CB times HAA. I apply the same logic as I did above. I'm going to be setting that derivative equal to 0, which cancels out that first term on the left-hand side. And so where that leaves me is 2 times CAE times S plus 2CB times E is equal to 2CAHAB plus 2CBHAA. I can cancel out the factor of 2 that's common through all my terms here. And then finally, I'm going to move everything over to the right-hand side. So I'm going to get 0 is equal to. And again, I'm going to, di to distribute out all the terms. So I have CA out front of one of the terms. So CA times HAB minus E times S plus CB times HAA minus E. That concludes step four. And so step five is basically just determining the minimum energy. And so what we have is two expressions. We have this first expression that we found by taking the derivative with respect to CA, and we have the second expression that we found by taking the derivative with respect to CB. 
I mean, we have basically how we can arrange this then to determine our energy of our system is that we can arrange this in the form of a secular matrix. And we can do this because both of these linear expressions are equal to zero. And so I can re-express these two linear expressions as HAA minus E, HAB minus ES, and I'll make that a capital S, the second row is going to have H, A, B, minus E, S. And then the final thing is H, A, A, minus E. And if we take the determinant of this matrix and set it equal to zero, then we should be able to solve for the energy of our system. And again, how I built this secular matrix is I just took the terms that had to deal with C, A, and they ended up in the column this first column, the terms that I had to do with CB, they went into the second column, and that this first row, this came from equation number one, and the second row, this came from equation number two. So we find the determinant of a matrix by multiplying down across, or diagonally across the two terms. And so if we do that, what we end up with is HAA minus E, multiplied with HAA minus E. And from that we're going to subtract off HAB minus E times S times HAB minus E times S. And that's equal to zero. Well, we can see that we basically have the same term twice. We actually have these same terms squared. So I'll write that out. HAA minus E squared and I'm going to move the second term to the right-hand side, so that's going to be equal to HAB minus E times S squared. In order to continue solving this, what we're going to do is take the square root of both sides, but we have to keep track of the fact that there's going to be two solutions here. Like when you take the square root of this, you're going to get a positive and a negative solution in both cases. But what that means is that what we get is four combinations. And so if I write out those four combinations, we're going to have then the plus solution on the left-hand side and the plus solution potentially on the right-hand side. We'd have the minus solution on the left-hand side and the minus solution on the, the left-hand side. We're going to have the plus solution on the left-hand side and the minus solution on the right-hand side or the minus on the left-hand side and the plus on the right-hand side. And if we were to really break this down in terms of how the permutations go, these two first solutions where I've got plus plus and minus minus, that means that these two solutions are going to have the same sign. And really it means that the, the sign in the end, or the it's going to be a plus equals a plus, because the two minuses cancel out and they give a plus in the end. And that these last two solutions, these bottom two, these are going to have opposite signs. So the way that we can then express this next line here so that we basically get the exact same result, meaning that we get a solution that's going to have the same sign and a solution that's going to have the opposite sign, is that when we take the square root of both sides, I can write this as HAA minus E, and that's equal to plus or minus HAB minus ES. And this plus or minus that I have written down right here, that's then maintains what we've just figured out over here, where we're either going to get a solution where we're going to have the same sign, in this case I'm writing it as plus, or we're going to get a solution with the opposite sign, which I'm just writing as minus. So I can now distribute in this plus minus term, and I can rearrange so I can put the, the h terms to the left hand side, and what I get is HAA plus or minus HAB, and I can move all the energy terms to the right hand side, and what that gives me is E plus or minus E times S. My left hand side I'm going to maintain HAA plus or minus HAB and that's going to be equal to the energy times 1 plus or minus S and so in the end I can actually finally solve for my minimum energy HAA plus or minus HAB divided by 1 plus or minus S and that's equal to my minimum energy.